Berlin by Night by M. Riff Chapter 40, The Pub While keeping an eye on the waves, the professor swirled the mug to dissolve the coffee, took a sip, and remarked, it's good. He shared, a few years back, I visited, the office, Jose's pub in Denmark. I recall one of the regular patrons saying, coffee without whiskey is a poor drink. He extended the mug to Azer and inquired, could you add some whiskey to this? Azer, still holding the mug and the heated coil in it, managed to retrieve, with one hand, the whiskey bottle from the leather case on the floor beside the bench. Balancing the bottle between his knees, he unscrewed the lid, poured whiskey into the professor's mug, and sealed the bottle. Returning the bottle to the bag, he mentioned, I recognize that saying, but oddly, I don't recall you visiting the office. I used to work there as a bartender. The professor replied, it probably happened before your time. He further added, as soon as people realized I was German, conversations about the Second World War became frequent. One guest narrated a story about a young man arrested during the German occupation of Denmark and sent to a concentration camp somewhere in Germany. Managing to hide within the kitchen waste bin, he escaped the camp. He had planned to leap onto a freight train and return to Denmark. However, after wandering in snow-covered forests for days with an empty stomach, he surrendered. He turned back, knocked on the concentration camp door, and requested to be let in again. He was eventually liberated at war's end, along with other prisoners, and sent back to Denmark. Azer looked at the water bubbling in the mug and unplugged the heating coil. He sprinkled some instant coffee into the mug and stirred the water with the coil to dissolve the coffee. He took the coil out and took a sip, not waiting for it to cool down a bit. The professor took a long look at him and asked, no whiskey. Azer shook his head and replied, no, thank you. He went on, given my past as a barkeeper, I've encountered numerous tales from the German occupation era. There's one that stands out, a handful of young individuals formed a resistance group. They convened in secret and determined to destroy the railway bridge outside the city. A brave young man assumed the task. He ventured to the bridge at night and confronted the reality that the bridge was solid iron, while all he possessed was a box of matches. The professor reflected, it parallels the revolutionary ideals we held in the past. Often, there's a significant gap between theory and reality. It appeared the professor was distancing himself from the youthful optimism that once prevailed in his life. Presently, they found themselves aboard an aged Norwegian fishing vessel, armed with an empty gun, on the way to liberate Topaz from a fortress guarded by laser weapons and other sophisticated armaments. <laughs>